Now for the fun part. Hi, Emmett. Hmm. Let me explain something to you all and um, um, give you the genesis of, of, of how we got here. Um, we have known, all of us in this room have known uh, for years that Firehouse One is antiquated, out of date, and it outlived its useful life. It was a building that was built for a volunteer fire department at a time when we had dozens and dozens and dozens of volunteers. Well, we don't now. We have full-time firefighters, and the, the facilities for the firefighters are, are below standard. Uh, it's not handicap accessible. It violates ADA. I can't, I can't even go talk to my firefighters. They have to come over here. Um, and we, have to, we, had, we knew we were going to have to do something in the building. The question was, do we knock it down or we build it? No one, do we go someplace else? So that's been on the drawing board for a while, exactly what to do. Um, uh, Chief Allen and I worked on this for a while. Chief Shulkers has been involved in it for quite some time. Then at the same time, a while, before Ms. Burkhart, hello, Dr. Burkhart, good to see you. Before she took the helm at the Board of Education, I started a conversation with Mike, with Mike Sander the superintendent before her, about doing something together over here, uh, coming up with some kind of a project where maybe we can help, because I know the Board of Education is, they're busting at the seams in their building, and, they, and they've got an inadequate boardroom, they have an in, inadequate meeting facilities for their needs, and they've got administrators stuffed in every closet in every spare building that they have all over the district. And it's a very inefficient way to run a railroad, and I was aware of that, so I was looking at a way we could kind of help each other. Um, as it turns out, we had assets that were different, that were complementary. The city of Erlanger could bond. We can borrow money, uh, and we've done it to, to build other projects, Firehouse 3, et cetera. And, and we finished paying off one last year, I think, uh, one set of bonds on a, on a project, so we had some, a little bit of capability there. They have the land. They own the park a lot, all that. So thinking maybe we can work a deal, Dr. Burkhart and I start talking, and it turns out that, uh, that we think we were thinking alike, and uh, we have plans to now, to present to you this evening for your thought and approval. I'd like to sign the contract and get going on this, because money's cheap now and it might not be next week, um, to build, to refurbish Firehouse One, to build sleeping quarters in it, to get another bay in it, uh, perhaps a workout facility in it for the whole city to use um, and to make it handicap accessible to get the firefighters uh, offices, the, 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 ma the management team over there's offices so that it's, it's actually a functional um, uh, department and that you can have boy firefighters and girl firefighters and they can have their own bathrooms and all those sorts of things that it, that it doesn't have. At the same time, have a facility for the Board of Education to employ for all of their needs which are many and varied, as we've been learning, as Dr. Burkhart has, has been coming over here and then keeping us up to date with what they're doing. And in the process, I decided that uh, what's the one thing that Erlanger doesn't have that it has needed forever and ever and ever as we take our FOP Christmas party to Edgewood's Senior Center, we don't have a meeting room that is available for anybody in the community. Never have. Well, we did. We had a community room that was in the basement of this old building here that started flooding <laughs> yeah. in 1967 or something like that. It's, it's probably still wet. Anyway, um, Emmett Hayes, who you all know, has been the architect. He's done the great work with the, with the Lloyd edition and all of the work that's been done with the Board of Education and knows how the State Board of Education and the buildings, Department of Buildings and whatever they have that, he knows how to play that game. And he's done a lot of government work for other uh, agencies in the area. So I just said, Emmett, go to work for us. So Emmett has done a great job of putting together a plan, which he's going to introduce to you all tonight. I understand it's already been vetted by our friends from the Board of Education. They are generally, I hope generally, in, a, in, in accord with it and excited about it. And uh, we would like to get started. I know the fire department is very anxious about getting this baby yeah. going. Um, and at the same time, there's something we've never had here, which is a community room, which can be used for all sorts of things, including our own senior center, if that's what we want to do. I mean, you know, when you go to the library on Thanksgiving for the Thanksgiving dinner that we put on, we turn half the crowd away because it isn't big enough. That tells you what, that there is a demand for this sort of thing. Emmett Hayes, have at it, my friend. Great. Uh, thank you all. I appreciate the uh, introduction. 
Uh, I have a handout. There's three sheets here. I'm going to pass these around and everyone can uh, just grab one of them. Great. Nice introduction. Uh, it's nice to see some familiar faces. Some new uh, We have an office uh, locally, and as the mayor mentioned, we do a lot of uh, municipalities. We work for about nine different school boards. Uh, do a lot of different city work, fire departments, and so forth. Uh, in the area it's our, our focus, and that's our specialty. So, uh, that's what we do. My father started the business in the early '60s. It's operated by myself, my brother, and uh, we have Mike Bishop, Ryan Bishop. Uh, a lot of what you see, uh, we started this whole process, and a lot of it starts off kind of a tabular data. And one of the first things that we did was just try to listen and try to gather some information. We had specific meetings with the fire department, uh, trying to gather. They did an excellent job. They, they were ready for this before I They've been ready. <laughs> I even came over there with Mike and so forth. They had lists and they did a lot of work on their own. Uh, we took a lot of that information, tried to put it down in, in square footages and so forth. We had the same kind of meeting with the mayor, uh, met with the school uh, district, uh, looked at inventory of their needs, the firehouse and the school district, looked at what other needs they don't have that they might need, uh, you guys, living quarters, things like that. Uh, they have a lot of things over the uh, annex that had to be moved in and tried to bring everything together. So, uh, Try to blend everything, and then we have to start thinking about how are all these pieces going to fit together. So we have three very specific entities. We talk senior center, our fire department, the school uh, needs. They all have different hours, a different culture within them, a different type of uh, atmosphere going in and out. These guys are here 24 seven, all day, every day. The school's a little more focused. Senior centers are kind of all over the place. So we developed a particular data which allowed us to identify the square footages that we required to meet all these needs. So we kind of came through, uh, looked at the apparatus, all the different pieces, and this firehouse uh, spaces came up to around 16,000 square feet. Uh, the Board of Education spaces came up somewhere around 7,700 square feet. And then the community spaces, all totaled up in the uh, 5,800 square feet, and we come about 30,000 square feet of program space, and then we always have quarters and other kind of things. So we're talking about 35, 36,000 square feet in the building project. The, uh, the current firehouse that exists there now is, is not really laid out and does not function exactly the way that it needs to for everyone's best interest, but it is a good structure, there's value in there. Uh, we felt that in inventorying it, that the tearing down starting over would create a couple of problems. It probably is not the best financial move to take it down and rebuild it. Uh, there's enough value there. Uh, but then we have to think, the firehouse is a living organism. You can't just close it down and reopen it. And with the acreage and the land that we've got around there, it's kind of hard to actually uh, rebuild it in a different location and tear it down and do something else with the property. So but we kind of felt that that was a good enough value to work around renovated standpoint. Uh, the board office is not really the same case. It is a uh, uh, kind of a moderately, I, I like to refer to it as a tired building. Uh, it has some issues and it's probably best that the way that it functions, the way it would have to be renovated, it would severely compromise the way that the board and anybody that used from this problem would use it if we kept it and worked around it. And the money wouldn't be that much different. So in our master plan we decided to go ahead and enter that piece down. For some of the folks on the board, you'll understand when I say John Miles built that building. Oh, gosh. Does that, ex does that explain <laughs> something to you? <laughs> uh, this is going to come up here in a minute. Uh, I've also given a couple of easel type sizes. These are exact duplicates of what I've guessed out. I'm use them for emotional things you can keep in your office, uh, uh, etc. Okay, 
images you see up here on the screen, uh, hopefully everybody can see this. This is a Google Earth image that we've taken of the aerial of the property. Side. Uh, the Google Earth image that we have up here uh, shows Graves Avenue, Baker, current building, and it's right over here in this corner. The uh, idea would be to keep the current station right here, the Carthouse Station. You can see the drive around base that comes through here right now. The current board office, which is uh, back in this area, would be demolished. The current maintenance building for the schools would remain. That's still serviceable. <coughs> we want to keep that. Uh, what we would be proposing to do is renovate the current station. The apparatus would stay on its current level. We would add another bay. We would add another bay to the <coughs> west. And then we would have a little addition out on the end. So we could get one more unit there. The second floor would mostly work out to be living quarters, fitness, those kind of things that would be there. We would have an elevator so there wouldn't be any issues on the <coughs> building. We would then come down, have entry areas for the fire department. We then would have a larger <coughs> addition down here, which would be more of the offices for the fire department, uh, training, these kind of things. This would all be kind of on the lower level, the main entry level. And this section right here would be what is comprised of the fire department. The challenge with these three very unique use groups is we have to make them all kind of accessible, but we can't have them interfere with each other. There's the consensus of talking to all parties that we wanted to have separate identities uh, to where we can kind of see the entrances. And there was some debate that went back and forth, but well, should we have a common lobby? And we kind of filtered through that, kind of wound up with, we all feel that she had separate entries. And someone would say, well, how do you know which one to go to? Well, we go to Crestfields Mall. You don't go in to buy sunglasses when you're on hamburger. And you kind of, the way that the architecture speaks to you, it will identify that. One of the ideas we had, we had a really great bell that's just sitting in the lawn. Let's put a towel and put that in there somehow. That speaks of of school would do the same kind of thing on the entry to the fire department uh, for something that they could have that would, that would be the same kind of identity. And then the community uh, space, we get a full scenario of all these different options, probably six or eight of them. And the one that really started kind of grabbing everybody was actually having the community room as a standalone building. Uh, because there's a lot of issues on, on who monitors that, who watches it, and, and, and who books it. And I, I understand that's all still going to be done through the city, not through the school district or the fire department, nor should they be responsible for dealing with that on a daily basis. And the kind of joke they had was, listen, to these take, and are they going to be bothering the fire department from doing <laughs> the herds of things that they need to be doing that are the same as the school? So it, it kind of came about that a detached uh, community center would actually be the best, it creates a real neat vestibule kind of area in between that can be an outdoor area. The school then would be attached to the fire department, but separated completely. You'd have a door that you could actually get between the two, but it would have its own identified entry. So you'd have a fire department entry off the grave side, a school department entry that would face the current Lloyd High School, and then the community space, which would be on the corner. A couple of the exciting things that this does for us is it gives the community space kind of the the vision, it shows itself on the corner, so it'll be the nice element that you actually see on the corner. You also, as you're looking down this way, you get great exposure on the fire department, and it would really double the look of the fire department all the way through here, and the function would show all the pieces. Uh, the schools, you know, we're not trying to create a, a showy statement here. That's not really the purpose of this project. Uh, the school becomes a very functional, uh, a very workable solution in the back that is somewhat understated, very, very accessible, you get the appropriate science so people would know where that is placed. Uh, we, they do need to have parking for their buses in the back uh, around here. They still have some areas. There's a lot of push and pull uh, with this layout. The, um, this, the community building needs parking. The master plan for Lloyd has a wonderful large parking lot over here. Currently are using some of it now, but that's in, in keeping with the master plans it develops. The property 
Mayor is alluding to is about 2.7 acres that the school has. It runs, this is the maintenance building, it kind of goes all the way down in the woods and comes all around it's pretty much all the wooded areas back there. Uh, we would need to have a pretty significant little detention area in the back, but we could have a parking mall along here. The way that we would see the facility is this would pretty much all be on grade. The fire department would have an upper level that they would currently have here that can be utilized. The school would be on grade and then we have a lower level because if you come out on the property as it kind of it kind of rolls off. So that they would be on grade and then you'd also be the drive around and go in the lower level, which is where the board all the, the board room and those kind of functions would be down below. I'll advance a couple of slides to kind of show you the particulars. <coughs> You can see this is a little bit more detailed, uh, showing the community room, uh, showing the lobby that would be alongside the community room with the kitchenette, the way it could be subdivided, the restrooms, etc. This wonderful outdoor garden, and I kind of see honey locusts, things like that. This could be part of the programs. One of the nice things that might be uh, usable off the community room if you wanted to meet outdoors or get part of your events kind of flow out into that area. Uh, the fire department, as was mentioned, the entry would be up in this area, administrative offices all the way around the edges, uh, training rooms and so forth in here. We would then have the, uh, the existing building with the apparatus in here, the new bay over on this area. And as we mentioned, this is the board office with all their administrative offices around uh, as such. We would have an elevator that would be shared by both parties. Uh, the majority of the elevator use would probably be for the uh, fire department because the Board of Education would actually get a drive on the lower side of actually allow you to go in below uh, to gain access to that piece. But you can use the elevator for, for the Board of Education if you want to stay inside. Yes, you Just can. come through a door. It's, you know, it's yes, not can. exclusively for the fire department. We want to be efficient. Elevators are very expensive as well as the ongoing recurring maintenance costs. Uh, this is the upper level of the fire department, and that's all existing space. Uh, we're putting the addition below for the bays, and this is the one-story addition down below. This shows the, uh, the use of a fitness center, all the bunk spaces, kitchen, recreational areas. that needs to be reviewed a little bit more, but that just kind of shows how all that program would actually fit on the upper level, and that's kind of the place, the place for that. And we do have elevator access to that from down below. So that elevator is actually a three-stop elevator. Go in, you go up to the fire department, go into the existing building, or down to the board office, uh, the board room and such. That's the upper level. I also have a slide I'll show you of the board office. shows real quick the uh, firehouse you'll be entering up here the firehouse and there really will be nothing down below this will be unexcavated this is the lower level of the board area pretty much a large boardroom multiple sizes bigger than what they currently have right now I don't know if you've been in there it's, it's kind of a hazard to get down there it's kind of a hazard to get out and there's columns and they've done a great job with what they've got but it's time to have a space like this. Uh, there's a lot of internal trainings and things like that, so there's a lot of curriculum advantage to what will occur at this in this kind of board setting. Uh, if they outgrow that for an event, they can book the community center just like anybody else could. Fire department might book it or, or what have you for different things. 
Uh, this has some of the programs we put like transportation, food, some, some of the other programs are going to be down below, the majority will be up above, but it'll have its own lobby, it'll be self-contained and elevator access right here as well. So that's pretty much the only area that's on the uh the garden I'll like to say basement. Uh, but that would be what that piece is there. One of the things we wanted to do, and we haven't really gotten real far into a big colored solution but you can see we try to give this a real, a real community appearance and you can see uh, the view from Graves Avenue so this is looking south uh, you have the current firehouse here and the whole idea was we didn't want to put the current firehouse sitting there looking like the old firehouse with all these things attached to it we wanted it to really blend and kind of so the idea was we might even reskin that with brick. Uh, part of the discussions we had was perhaps to maybe go with a, uh, a red brick type color scheme that might match the wood. And if our house red brick gets a lot of good, good directions to go. So this would be the existing structure that would be retrofitted. We would have the new base on the side. We would then have the, uh, the entry feature that would be for the fire department. This is the administrative area that would be for the fire department. We would then have the bell tower, which would be for the school. You can see that those towers kind of peaking up here in the community uh, center, which would be the uh, kind of the focus out on the corner uh, element. Uh, the next drawing you have is the view from uh, Boyd High School, so this would be looking west, as if you're sitting over in the park lot with band practices. Uh, if you look over, this is the piece that would be out front, the community center, we have a nice gable entry, so it is identified, and the clock tower would be the entry point for the, uh, the school. This would be the upper level of the board office, they would have the lower level that you could come around and go in, and here's the entry feature for the fire department, facing graves. Uh, the bottom element that you see, this is the uh, uh, this is the rear view, so this is the back side of the existing firehouse where the engines and apparatus pull in. This is the addition. This is the Board of Education's addition, upper level. This is the area below grade where the board offices, or the, um, the boardroom would be right here. This would be the main lower level entrance. This would be the community room up here. Uh, we see some neat little, maybe some little arched elements through here kind of define that courtyard space that's in between there. We just can't let that as a free range where everybody can run the mill. We might have that gated off or, or something like that so it's a little more controlled. Uh, that can be a really neat soft space. And uh, we wanted something that wasn't real showy. We we're, we're kind of a political time that we don't want to be real flashy, so to speak. We want it to be a really good kind of solid construction and it will endure, uh, look good for a long time, and um, something we can all be proud of. So that was pretty much the initial exterior studies that we came up with. That's kind of where we've gotten so far with it. I think some of the um, uh, the big discussion on it, I know the board has seen it at the regularly scheduled meeting uh, last month. I think everybody's been very excited about it, and all parties that we've talked to. Uh, there are some issues we have to work out on land swaps and things with the State Department. Uh, I don't see anything that isn't, it isn't within grasp. I mean, it, it, it's all doable. It's just we have to make sure we uh, go through all the hoops and do everything correctly uh, because it is really unique. Some of the direction that we've gotten, it would be a case where uh, the land would actually be uh, deeded to the city and, and they would retain ownership and then the board would actually get uh, some form of a rental agreement for the actual property and like kind of change. So that's kind of how the, it would work. 2.7 acres would actually go to the city and then the board would get some reassurance on a rental agreement uh, for the, the actual square footage itself. So that's where it is. It, it's, a, it's a process that we have to work through, but that's pretty much where we are. Uh, we've done the programs, we've done some preliminary layouts, it's really kind of at the decision maker level now for everybody to kind of give feedback and kind of interject and the boards get some, some feedback. So we want to kind of make a presentation so everyone can kind of jump in. I'm here to answer any questions you have. Or I, just, I know I talked with Chief earlier today about this and uh, 
he had met and said that we're building this like for 20 years in the future, not as of today. Like it would, it would last us going forward 20 years. We'd have space enough to cover what we're trying to do. Is that true? Uh, I believe so. Okay. I mean, looking at the original assessments, the uh, fire department came, I think, were excellent. The big thing is just the whole culture has changed. It's around volunteers and projects. It's, it's everybody's there, three shifts, and that's kind of the culture. And I don't see that changing going back <laughs> from what I've seen. So uh, it's, it's a little more organized and everything has been. So that's kind of the primary motivation. Great. Um. Right now, when we go in the fire department, we have to get buzzed in because of the security. Can you re-explain the elevator thing and how people can't just wander in? Right. The, um, let me go back to the, the slide on floor center was 5,800 square feet? Uh, I believe we get it. So the 4,000 feet is minus the 1,800 for the kitchen and stuff like that? Yeah, what we have is we have a, and, and how we usually work things is in net square footage, which is usable area for the actual inside of the space. Uh, I had 800 in the lobby, I had 4,000 in multi-purpose, I had 300 in the kitchen, I had 200 for storage and seat uh, storage, I had 500 restrooms, and then we added an additional 20% for wall thicknesses, mechanical, maybe custodial, some other kind of ancillary kind of functions that we go into it. So we had a total of 5,800 square feet plus uh, about 20% of that again, so another thousand on top of that. So you're around 68,000, 68, 7,000 square feet for the total. Well, but your big room would be 4,000 inside wall to wall. Okay, so. That's, that's why I'm getting it. 4,000 feet, can you translate that to how many people? Uh, yeah, let I me. Mean, I don't know if you can see on your sheet. The, uh, a lot of it depends on how you actually lay things out. I mean, you can get, uh, I mean, you lay out the tables, 
seats like this, you're only using about maybe five square feet a person. Seven is what the code allows. When you do more tables and chairs, you're more like 10. But um, you can see these are, I believe these are six foot rounds, as you see on here. So you're going to be able to get I mean, I'm, I'm going to guess you're going to be below, but you pack it, you probably get 350 in there. Oh, that'd be if, if, if you really packed it. It's going to be about the same size as Edwards. Mm -hmm. yeah, I know, I know. We had things that match up with Edwards. Yeah, we've, we've had over 350 in that, and we had our NBA NFL Hall of Fame banquet. So. Right. And while I don't want to necessarily go into competition with them, um, we need to have a facility that we can use here. Oh, absolutely. I've always said that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, was, it was based on the same size as the Now, we don't have a, that I'm aware of, you all might know, I'm going to be 61, I should know, but um, we don't have a seniors organization in the city of Erlanger. They meet in Ellesmere, and they have the group, the Erlanger Ellesmere, but this is set up so that that could happen if there was a demand for it. This is set up for, that, so there could be wedding receptions, there could be retirement dinners, it could be the FOP Christmas dinner, it could be the Thanksgiving dinner, it could be any civic related thing that we as a city council, and working also with our friends across the street, would come up with uh, to permit. One of the reasons of setting it separate, <coughs> and I, I, Emmett, we went through this, and I'm just gonna be straight out with you, because it's with the Board of Education. If we set this building alone and not tied to everything, we don't have to worry about a wedding reception with beer. With alcohol. If, if, if it were hooked to the Board of Education building, they might have a problem with that with Frankfurt. I don't think our friends would have problems. Yeah. <laughs> but, but Frankfurt might. And if so, they're uh, not invited. And so, <laughs> and so that's why it's set apart. You know, one of the interesting things, that the way this thing is developed, the, the needs of the fire department have been worked out not by Emmett or me, but by the fire department. And the needs of the Board of Education have been worked out by the Board of Education. And exactly how it's wound up, Emmett's already said, yeah, we move a wall, well, you know, <laughs> that, that can happen. Um, so it, it has been designed by the, peop the users. And I think that's great. The second thing I'd like is I really like the fact that this is a partnership between two governmental entities yes. to share their resources in this in this period of time and resources are tight. We all know how they have to fight tooth and nail for everything over there and how they get it all done in, in that little building is beyond me. Well, they don't because they're spread out all over the district and, and, <coughs> and so it's a, it's a great example that we're showing other communities that you can have <coughs> partnerships like this to, to do this facility. Um, we're also at the time now where the economy, it might not be for long, that's why I don't want to wait around too much. The, the economy might be able to get us some money relatively at a fair price if we bond this and if we sell bonds. We hope the government doesn't do away with tax exempt municipal bonds because <coughs> that will change everything. But at the same time, it, it, I think this is one of those where, where all of the <coughs> Try to think what the word is. <coughs> All the different vectors have come together and they've landed in one place, and it's on that parking lot over there. And I'm excited about this because it's it's been a long time coming. <coughs> Bill, do you have questions? I've got several questions, Mayor. If that's uh, feasible enough. Sure. Uh, I was my my first question is uh, how long would it, would it take for the construction to take place on these buildings? Like like from the time you start digging till time of completion, <coughs> is there a time frame involved? I'll kind of run probably are going to need a couple months to do the land swap and get those kind of details figured. Uh, from design, <coughs> construction, work out utilities, site plans, all the design issues, I'd say you're probably five or five months would be probably where that should be. I'd say as far as construction, I always like to look at uh, municipal projects and people always say they can go to Kroger's in three months, why so does it take you a year to build something? Well, we don't throw money at it either. And we always like to get the biggest bang of the buck on these projects. So I would say the sweet spot where you'll get as much as you can for the money would be somewhere around probably 14 months. Uh, we can start steering it backwards. You can probably <coughs> get as 10. I mean, there, there's, there's 
way we can steer and we can have those discussions on, on where you want to be. Uh, if you go much longer, it's going to cost you money. If you get real tight and start writing all kinds of super damages and say, I want to know how much money, it might cost you money. So I'd say a fair ratio right now is probably about half a year to get everything organized and then get it to where we can start bidding and get a better thing probably about a year or 14 months to get everything from start to finish. Wow. Uh, but you'll live it the whole time. I mean, this is this is, this will we'll make sure this works well, so we can't mess with their operation or the board office, and it allows yeah. both entities to op operate the entire duration. And that was one. That was one. That was another one of my major questions too, as far as you know, with the with us taking out the parking facilities that, that are existing right now and uh, being able to operate at efficiently at the same time. That you know, even before it's all done, is. Um, just a real concern there as far as I'm concerned is with the yeah, parking lot. we're lucky that we have a very large parking lot right next door. The, the, the parking lot is well over the past of the van parks. You see, the fire department, they're going to have to build a new addition. They're going to have to move all their offices so we can gut a major section right. the upstairs and move around. So there's going to be, and that's why I say 14 months, because we have to build some things and renovate some older areas. We just can't go in and start on everything at once. Okay. Yeah. The board office is going to have to live the entire duration. They're going to have to make one move, and then we have to actually take that down, fill that in, and do the site work, and all associated with that. Yeah, it's, I think, Bill, probably the, the community room will be the last thing built because it's kind of sit that there by itself, and we'll need that space for everything else. Right. And you get the fire department, the board of education, and their buildings first. Mm -hmm. And then my, my final my final question in regards to everything is, uh, will it affect anything at Erlang or Ellsmere United Ministries? No. Okay. They got their own land next to us. They okay, got their own all. parking, you know. All right. It's so going to give them more visibility. I agree there, so. Kevin. Has anybody thought about with the community center maybe putting in some, some type of divider? maybe more than one group could be in there. Oh, sure. Design. That's part of the interior design, yeah. We, we tentatively just get one in there, but we could cut it up in multiple. And if it holds 350, you could get three or four groups in there one time. Yes. If it's a you know, right. Yeah, we hadn't gotten to that detail yet, but that's pretty much like here. It, we're going to do It's going to be done. Tommy. Chief Shokers, the uh, capacity for the fire department, if you put that that's designed in there with this, the capacity for the additional equipment. So you put in that future needs for personnel and addition. We, we, we look at, we ask everybody to look at what they saw down the road. That's why we see it in the day. We need this to get one time shot. Okay. <laughs> what makes you think that? <laughs> well, that was built in the 70s and we're in the 10s now, so. You know. <laughs> The, the key, the key to that is, well, a very important point is, you know, Chief Allen and I, and actually Chief Koenig, go way back. We've had these discussions about this for a long time, and I know Terry and the guys have worked really hard on this before it got its most recent legs, before uh, Dr. Burkhart and I actually got our heads together because we do, we're gonna have to do something, and we've had it in the budget, we've had plannings for it in the budget. We didn't know what we were gonna do, whether it was gonna be a standalone project. Well, if we're going to have to borrow the money, you know, and need more land, then you, that's when all these other things started to come into play. Right. But maybe working a deal with the Board of Education and then, then the, the community room, which is something we've always needed to have. So, interesting. Yeah, Tom? Uh, who's going to decide the uses of the center? I mean, I know it sounds like we're going to be scheduling, but as the board must come together on decisions on what the uses will be, whether it'll be weddings. I mean, I know, I know the school system is also looking at the children they serve and some of those uses. I mean, we've, we've kind of worked that out, too. Yeah, I, I, I'm not as concerned about the board and the city working out those details. Okay. Uh, they have lots of needs, and hopefully this building is going, their new building is going to meet a bunch of them, especially with their big room in the basement that they're going to have. But this community center is for the community. And if the Board of Education needs to use it for a after school program or for bringing the kids, the, the Boys and Girls Club there, or if they need it for our three and four year olds to do something, that's what we're there for. We'll work out the deal because it's a partnership. Even though we'll be running the thing, they don't have, they don't need to be running another building. They got enough to run. We'll run the thing, but the actual plans and what it's for will be done 
We'll do that by the contractor in agreement. Yeah. Will there be a charge for the community center? Sure. Okay. Well, yeah, we got to yeah, pay for it that's, somehow. That's what we're not saying. donating. We're not donating. No, I know. I was just making <laughs> yeah. sure. I was just yeah, making Tom. sure. So just the last question. So I know we'll be ready from the board, from the board, from the area. How are we going to be renting this? I'm sorry. I didn't How hear long are we going to be renting this land for? But we're going to buy them. If the land's going to be ours. They're going to rent for us. Okay. And what we're having done is having the property appraised using uh, um, the, the regular appraisers that we use in this area for governmental pieces, and to come up with a um, with a, a what the value is to the city of Rolanger for this land, and that's going to be a part of the, in my opinion, a part of the the deal. Where they're also our partners are going to be working this together, so they're not going to be paying what we would charge St. Elizabeth to come rent space. They're our neighbors and our partners, and we're going to work out a long-term deal. It's probably going to be less than fair. Well, I, it will be less than fair market value because there is there is combined incentive for both of us to work together on this. So you know, we're getting, they don't have to give us the land, but we can't do our project without it. So there is a there's a reason to be brothers and sisters in this, and that's what we're going to be doing. I want to know because I know what I need to do. I've got a contract sitting on my desk at home. I need to sign which is an administrative function, so you don't have to vote on it. But I want to know, is there any objection to us going ahead with this project? Lord, no. And what a great presentation of it. Thank you so much. Now, the deal, well, I have to tell you, I've already had Greg working on the financing part of it. There is a catch-22. If we can't get the money that's, that's within, with the, with the cash flow that, that we can do, and Greg's working on it now, then we'll have to come back and revisit what we build and how we build it. The firehouse has to be done, and I think the school board has to be done. So, but I am confident. You know, Greg has pulled rabbits out of hats for the past four or five years. I, in, in with this dispatch debacle that he's he's managed us through. This is fun. We're building a building that's going to be the buildings are going to be here for 50, 100 years, and uh, and it, it's a little more of a, a positive. A warm fuzzy than a cold prickly, right, Greg? And he's working on it. So, any other questions of, of Emmett? Yeah. I'm looking at this picture. I still want to get back to the community where I wasn't really finished with my time, of course, because I always ask a bunch of questions. Anyway, it's two levels, right? Uh, no. Okay, so this one, this purple one over here on your sheet. I uh, believe that says community room below. It says community center below. So what does that mean? It means that the community center is underneath this? No, that's the second floor plan. So the only space on that sheet is the upper level of the firehouse. And it shows the layout of that upper level of the it's, firehouse. Renee, it's like taking a slice like this. It's a plan. It's like 10 feet above the ground. And the only thing it's going to show is the second level of the firehouse. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have colored that in, but it shows, it, it'll say that's below, it's kind of like that's really the roof of the community center, and that's really going to be the roof of the board area, and it's really going to be the roof of the This is the roof of our top here. Administrator. Okay, because that's the top floor, though. So the community room is only one floor. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a slave on grade, right? There's no basement, nothing above it. And that same level of the community rooms will be one level above it in the old fire department building. The new fire department area will be still just one floor. And the board office will be on that level and have one basement level underneath it. So three levels total. The entry level, you have a second floor in the old section of the fire department, and a lower level in the new section of the board office. I'm such a stickler. I do kind of step in. Waiting for Renee to formulate the next question. Oh, you know it's coming. I know, I know. <laughs> See the wheels turn. I'm just trying to figure out if, I don't know, 350 people I'm comparing it to Edgewood. I've never been in Edgewood, so it's like, wow, this is great. Is it going to be big enough in 20 years? And then, well, I mean, how much? How much would it cost to make it just a little bit bigger? I mean, you're already digging the hole. It, right now, it's right now it's about as big a community center as there is in the whole area. It's bigger than Cold Springs, Edgewood's in bigger. It's bigger than Independence's Senior Center, I think, by a few few square feet. 
Um, it's hard to project what kind of community room we're going to need, but you know, this is, um, it's a good question, Renee. I don't know. I can't see that far in the future. But it's, it's um, 4,000 square feet more than we have now. Well, yeah, and, and, and so I don't, I don't know what the, how to answer your question. Okay. It's a good question, but I don't know. I mean, it all looks really pretty on here because it lines up. You've got the board over here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm being honest. You could potentially, this could be something to be cognizant of the through the design process. Well, not a basement, but right now we have a drive loop that comes around here. And the reason for that is we wanted to, we wanted the fire department to have a real sense of presence and, and entry to parking right there in front of us. Obviously, the accessibility is there. It's a paramount thing. But you could always do something. You actually could turn this back down potentially if you're willing to relocate those spaces, grow out a little bit towards their age. So we could be cognizant on the design on how we structurally do things and how we can knock things out. So what about if you built the building to where you could add a second floor? We could maybe, maybe do it with our 3,000 square feet on it. No, I'm talking about if you build a building where you could add a second floor to it. Look at that. Uh, you could, but I just really I'm trying to guess of what you got for I know it wouldn't go with your look. I mean, it's but pretty. But my, my guess is if you outgrew it, you want to keep your space as a big space. And so instead of having a two, three fifties, you'd be better off getting a three fifty and then add another two hundred on to it. So you could get that five hundred if you had to. I mean, the three fifty. That's a very. That's it's a big room. That's a very compressed environment. I mean, that's not like all spread out. Like right. Right. I just remember this year when I went to the FOP Christmas party at the Edgewood Center. This is as big, if not, they were bigger than that. That was huge. There was all kinds of room for everybody there, and I was I, I was just a little jealous. It, this was already in the works at the time. I was going, this is, we need this. We, we have to have, the fire department can have functions there. I mean, I, I can think of a dozen or more things that we need to do in this community we have no place to do it. Well, how many times have we paid receptions? Oh, yeah. For an event. Yeah. Well, I think it's a good size. I think it's. But I think it's great. Yeah. But but Renee, that's a great question. And I the, my thought was we come toward grades with it. We add on to the side if we have to add more. But that's we'll be we'll be gone by then. <laughs> somebody I know. else. Why leave somebody else a mess? But yeah. I got one more question, and I'll do it. I promise. Um, is there such a thing as yeah, what? like on that long that long wall that oh would be God, against grades that you would actually be adding on to if you needed to? Is is it like I don't know what it's called? Is it like a knockout wall? Uh, do you know what I'm do you know what I'm asking? Exactly what you're saying. Okay. And I guess the key thing to keep in mind you have to look at the cost. Uh, on a lot of if you try to go long span, you could do a big trust curve for you say I want to knock this wall out, make a whole lot of space. Uh, there's, Costs associated with building all that structure probably be a little on the prohibitive side. Uh, if you could entertain maybe a column here and there, you know, that's a discussion to have. I think a lot more financially uh, powerful. Now, like this expansion here is really not the whole wall. I mean, it, it has a, it has a, a very you know, there's a connection there, but you can divide it off and so forth. So we might have to talk about that. I mean, you can do it to where you make the whole thing a knockout wall. Well, would that be like that would be like a um, just to do something in case of they ever did want to after we were gone they wanted to make it bigger? That you can, but I would be a little apprehensive until I get into the numbers. The cost on that is pretty okay. high dollar for that length of what we what we do. But we do it all the time with different. You know, we did St. Barbara's Church in the late '60s, and it was not the studs out. It was already there. That investment was already made. So it's a discussion we can make and just double it. Okay. Any, Kevin, do you have any questions? I just question? wanted to ask Greg or you, when are we going to see some numbers? We're estimating that this is going to cost in the $8 million range. Greg's working. That's just that's a big round number at this stage. Emmett came from Emmett. And um, Greg's working on the details now. So, and with, and with that, we'll have some inside on land costs, 
You you have all the details. Right. I don't want to say, yeah, let's do it. No. I didn't want to take this project further if there was major objection to it. Now we're going to go to the next stage, which is, like Emmett said, the, the planning and the Greg working on the cost, the costing and uh, he's contacting bond council and all those sorts of things. No, we don't like education or firefighters. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, we can't pay them much, and we can't hire many of them, but we'll give them a nice building. How's that? Because I can't, I can't bond salaries. <laughs> Any other questions? Emmett, this is a great presentation. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with it. I'll sign that contract. And it's just sitting at home and get that to you. Um, we're excited about working with you all. Is there anything you all want to add to us? We're happy. To, this is, most of these folks you all know, they're part of the Board of Education. And uh, we're just excited that this project has is, is, uh, come to this point, and we're really looking forward to continuing this partnership. Yeah, I think the same is with the Board of Education. We're excited to work with the city. One of the things we've talked about over the years is partnering with the city. I mean, we have so much in common, we have so much at stake that um, it just makes sense. Well, you know, some of the things we've learned from talking to Dr. Burkhart, and we had this great meeting month and a half ago, whenever it was, when you came over and answered a lot of questions for us, is, it, it, you know, one of the big needs that the, this district has, and I'm talking about not the government, not the government of the district, but the kids, is preschool. Getting these kids ready, that percentage that Kathy gave us has staggered me, of the number of kids coming into first grade, or even kindergarten, that were kindergarten ready. And, you know, this is the type of facility that gives us options. That's all I can say. I, I'm not going to put any plans on it. I'm going to say it gives us options. And if we keep doing what we've always done, we're going to do the same thing, and I'm not going to plan on doing that. Any other questions? Okay, great. And what, you know, as we were looking at it, going through this courtyard between the, between the uh, uh, community room and the fire department, you can see it's a white gap in there. That, that's got a lot of possibilities because it's going to be sheltered because it's going to have buildings on both sides, but it's green space with plantings. You know what, what the, Dale and those people at the public works do. You know, they used to have a greenhouse, remember? Oh, yeah. they beautiful. It'll place. it'll be it'll be a beautiful place and it'll be a great addition, not only for the firefighter, the people in the fire department to come out and get fresh air, the people to use who are in the in the room. I hate to call it the area to go smoke because people do that, but it, it's an area to go out and get fresh air. And then the board of education can use it at all times. With kids are over there or their meetings or they can have sessions outside. It's just going to be a nice sheltered area. I think it's going to work great. Okay, Emmett, anything else? Yes, sir. Any more questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you Thanks for coming. Much. That is the, all, the only thing we have tonight, and we are complete. Oh.